Hello, 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 my name is Kashmar and welcome to Geek Factor TV. Today I will teach you how to play In Between. In Between is a brand new card game designed by Adam Kwapiński and published by Board and Dice. Board and Dice provided us with a copy of this game for which I say many thanks. Now this game is, is set in a fictional, fictional town of Upsideville. Now in this town there is a creature a creature lurking behind the shadows, trying to lure its inhabitants into its own dimension. Now it's your job as the towns, towns folks or townspeople to try and protect your citizens and make sure they stay safe and secure in your own human dimension. This is a two-player game. Now, each player will have a chance, will try to drag as many characters into their own dimension as they possibly can and make sure they stay there in a state of their pleasing and choosing. Now, I'm gonna, first we're going to talk about setup, how to set, properly set up the game. While talking about the setup, I'm going to tell you a few things about the components. Now, one thing I want to mention here is what I have here for you is still a prototype. Now, this is very, very close to the finished product, but still some details like mostly the components quality might change. The artwork is final, but uh, for example, the tokens will look slightly different. And I'm mostly talking about uh, the quality of the tokens or the quality, for example, of this wooden activity marker. But this is, I would say, like 95% complete. This is as close as you can get with a prototype to a finished product as you can get. So uh, that's it. Let's get to the table. And now let's talk how to prepare and set up in between. First, let's take a look at the character cards. Now, the character cards are two-sided. One shows the character in the human dimension and the other shows the same character but in the creature dimension. Now on both sides we have the same type of information. We have the safety track, we have the ability that triggers at a particular point during the game and we have the symbols. One symbol belonging to the creature dimension right here, the red one, and the other belonging to the human dimension, the blue one. Obviously we have some beautiful artwork to com compl complete the card. So the first thing you do is you take all the character cards you have in the deck and then you shuffle them. Then, once you're done, you deal 10 of them in a circle. Now the first card you put on the table, you put it so it shows the human dimension face up. Then you alternate between the creature dimension and the human dimension in order to complete the circle. Once you've dealt 10 cards this way, you put the remaining cards back in the box, they will not take part in this game. The first card that you deal, where you have the star symbol right here, this is the card on which you place the activity marker. Now, if the card is showing the character in a human dimension, you put the activity marker like so, so it shows the creature dimension side up. If, it was the cre if the character was in the creature dimension, you would do it the other way around. Now within easy access of both players, for example, inside the circle of the character cards, you place the common supply. Now the common supply consists of the energy cubes, the symbol tokens, and the safety markers. Inside the circle, you also place the direction token, which, sh which shows which direction the activity marker will move during the game. First, you place it so it shows the clockwise direction. Both players take their corresponding awareness cards and place their markers on the zero spot on the track with the active sides up. If the awareness ability gets used up during the game, then you flip the token with the exhausted side up. But for now, obviously, at the beginning of the game, the marker is with the active side up. Each player now takes their own deck, they shuffle it, and then they draw three cards from the deck, and those three cards form their starting hand. They keep the hand secret from the other player. Make sure to leave some space nearby for a discard pile. Finally, each player takes five energy cubes in their corresponding color. 
The first active player is the player whose side is shown by the activity marker. In this case, it would be the creature player. Now obviously you have to choose which player is playing the town and which player is playing the creature. Now the way you do that is by deciding who was the last of you to set off a fire alarm. Well, in case neither of you hasn't, uh, which was the case for most of my plays, well, then you have to pick a different way of figuring out who, to play, who is going to play the town and who is going to play the creature. Now, uh, before we get to the specifics of the gameplay, I want to talk to you firstly about the concept of safety. Because as I've said, each character has a, their own safety track and we will be trying to lure them into our dimension and make sure they stay there by, this is going to me mechanically translate into putting the safety markers on those safety tracks and moving them along those tracks through the game. So uh, before we move on, I decided that before we move on with the rest of the gameplay, I thought it would be wise to just first explain to you the concept of the safety and what happens when you move the safety marker around because once, you, once you've learned that, the understanding of the uh, mechanics of, the whole of, each, of every single each and every single phase will be much easier for you to swallow. So let's get on and let's get down to the table and let's talk, about a little, let's talk a little bit about how the safety thing, how the safety aspect of the game works. The main goal of the game is to take care of the characters. Now, for the human dimension, for the town player, it will mean to get them to a secured location. For the creature, it will make sure you get them devoured. Those things are represented by moving the safety markers on the safety tracks of those characters. Now, each time you will get a chance to move or to switch a safety marker, you will get a chance to move it on those spaces on this very track. Now when you get a chance to do so, you can move it by one spot to either side. You can either go this way or this way. Now when those characters are not, they don't have any safety markers on them, they are considered to be in the in-between state. So when you have a chance to switch or to move a safety marker and there is no safety marker on a character, you can either put the safety marker on the very top spot on their track or you can flip them to the other dimension. And then again, once you get a chance to move the safety marker, you can then put, them, put the safety marker on the very top spot on the safety track. So like I said, the human player will want to make sure that their characters are secure. Now as you can see we have three different states of security, so to speak, on the safety track, represented by four, symbol, four, four symbols, four spots on the track. Now those represent, for the human dimension, this is a so-called alert level, these two represent a guarded level, and this one on the very bottom repre represents a secured level. Now, for the creature dimension, this is a nervous level, those two mean a terrified level, and this one, the final one, is a devoured level. Now, each time a safety marker goes to the very bottom spot on either side of the character card, those safety markers are considered to be locked in, which means they cannot be moved by anything unless some character actions or some, character, some cards abilities specifically allow you to do so. But unless you are specifically allowed to do so, those markers are considered locked in, unable to move. Now in this case, this would mean that Jamie right here is devoured by the creature. In this case, Scott is considered to be secure. The goal of the game is for the human player to get three characters to a secured state, while for the creature player to get three characters to a devoured state. So like I said, if there is no safety marker on a card and you want to move a safety marker on that card, you can choose to either put the safety marker on the very top spot or to flip it to the other dimension. Then once you put the safety marker on the track, 
when you, when you get a chance to move it, you can either remove it from the card and then with your next move you can flip it to the other side or you can simply continue moving it down the safety track until you get to it to a state that you want. Okay, so now that you understand that, let's talk about gameplay. So, the way this game works is beginning with the first active player, each player takes turns. Now, there, are, there is no specified number of rounds. The game lasts until the end game conditions are met and then the winner is crowned. That's, it's as simple as that. Uh, now, in each player's turn, you're going to go through four phases. Those four phases are mentioned right here on your little cheat sheet, which is very helpful during the game, especially during some of the, uh, a few of your first plays. So we have the awareness phase, which is where you check your awareness if there's something you can do with that. Then there is the action phase, which is the real meat of the game, where you perform your actions, where you try and drag the characters to your side, where you try to raise your awareness, where you try to basically outsmart your opponent through the actions you perform. Then there, there is the third phase, which is the activity phase, which is, you can, which is where you get the chance to activate uh, the abilities of the characters and also where you get to see if you can raise your awareness even more and further it down the line. And finally there's the movement phase, which is the final shortest phase of the game, where you get to move the activity marker and flip it to the other side to signal that, there, that now it's the other player's turn. So, like I've said, it's one of, your, one of your turns, then you play through each of the four phases, then it's the next player's turn, he or she plays through each of all of the four phases, and the game moves so on and so forth until the end game conditions are met. So, like I said, four phases, let's see what you do in each of the four phases. So the first phase is the awareness phase. This is where you get a chance to activate your awareness ability, but remember, you can do it only once per game, which means once you've done it, you cannot do it again for the whole game. This is a one-time ability that can be triggered only once during the whole game. This is very important that you understand and that you remember that. Now, first what you do is you check if you have any ability that you can use, and you do that by checking the spot on which the marker is currently on. Now obviously if it's on zero then there is no ability for you to use. Once you move the marker down this awareness track then you finally can use an ability. Now the abilities which you can use are either the one corresponding to the current location of the marker or any of the abilities above that location. So if your marker was like here on the number three spot of the track you could use either this ability, this ability, or this ability. You could not use any of those. If at any point during the game, the marker would move to the number six, you immediately win the game. Now, once you've used an ability, you flip the marker to the exhausted side to make sure you and your opponent remember that you cannot use an awareness ability anymore during the game. Phase 2 is the action phase, which is where you get to perform one action. Now the action you can perform comes from the choice of one of the three possible actions. The first action is to play a card. The second action is to prepare, which means you get to draw more cards from your personal deck. And the third possible action is rest, where you get a chance to gain more energy cubes. Let's take a look at how those work in, those, in this particular order. When you play a card, you have one of two options. The first option is you can take a character, any character, doesn't have to be the character with the activity marker on them, any character, and you have to make sure that this character has a symbol that matches the symbol on the card you just played. If it does, you have the option to switch the safety marker by one spot. So in this case, what I have here is I could take this character since he doesn't have any safety he doesn't have a safety marker on him then what I could do since I'm the town player obviously I could flip him to the human dimension side the other option one when you play a card is you can take this symbol token corresponding to the symbol on the card you've just played 
and you can place it on any other character card. Once again, the character doesn't have to be the character with the activity marker on them. Now the thing to remember here is that a card, a character, can have a number of symbol tokens on them at any point during the game. The only thing it cannot have is a symbol token corresponding with the symbol already printed on the card. Once you've placed a symbol token on a card, this, sim this card is currently considered to have that symbol. So in a future turn, if you play a card that also has that symbol, you can now move the safety marker on this character card. Once you've played a card, you also have the option to play its ability, to perform the ability written right here on this card. In order to do so, you have to pay the required cost in energy. You have to take the amount of energy cubes from your supply and return it to the common supply. Once you've done that, you can activate the ability on the card you've just played. Now you don't have to do that, you can, you, you, can, you have the option to just play, a card, play the card and just take a look at the symbol and do something corresponding with the symbol on that card and completely ignore that card's ability. Once you've done all of that, you return the card to your discard pile. One last thing I want to tell you about is that once you play the card and place a symbol on a character, that, that symbol token remains there until it's moved. Now, when, it, when is it moved? When you play the same card, but you want to place uh, the same card, I mean with the same symbol, but you want to place the symbol on a different character. Then you take it from the character it's currently on and you place it on a new character. This is a special kind of card that I want to tell you about because this is a so-called equipment card, which means it's specified right here, it says equipment. Now, what you do with equipment cards is you play them, you take a look at the symbol, you do whatever you want with the symbol, but then once you, play the, once you decide to play it for the ability and pay the cost and energy, you do not play it and then discard it to your discard pile, you leave it in-game in the gaming area. Now, at any point during the game, the town player cannot have more than three equipment cards in the game area. Those, car those cards remain there unless they are removed by effects coming from the creature's cards. Those equipment cards give you some abilities, some bonuses that can help you throughout the game. Now usually they don't specify where to put them, but there are some cards that tell you that you have to attach them to a character or something like that. But this one, for example, just says whenever you play a card with this particular symbol, you may draw one card. So this equipment card would simply be somewhere within the game area, not in your discard pile, not in your deck, just somewhere in front of you to make sure that the creature player remembers that you, that you have these, this equipment card in the game. So that was the play a card action. The second possible action is the prepare action, which is where you get a chance to take your deck and draw up to five cards. And by that I mean you have to draw as many cards as you need to make sure you have five cards on your, in your hand. Now the third and final possible action to take is the rest action. In this action, what you get is you get a chance to gain more energy cubes. The way you perform this action is you count how many character cards are facing your dimension side up. So for example, if I was the human player and I wanted to perform the rest action, what I would do is I would count up the character facing the human dimension side up, which is one, two, three, four, five. I get a chance to get five energy cubes. I take them from the common supply and I put them in my own personal supply. Now at any point during the game, you cannot have more than 10 energy cubes. Now the third phase is the activity phase. What you do here is you check which character has the activity marker on them. Then the player whose dimension that character is in get a gets a chance to raise their awareness. But once you check it, you see if there is a safety marker on the character. There is a, if there is no safety marker, if, if the character is still in the in-between, then nothing happens. Then you simply move on to the next phase. But if there is a safety marker present on the character, on any spot on the safety track, 
then we have the chance to raise our awareness. Now what you do is you get a chance to move this marker right here on the awareness track by one spot. How you do that is you pay the cost in energy equal to the level to which you are hoping to get. Which means if I have it at zero level right now and I want to get to level one, I pay one energy cube. If I was at level one and I wanted to get to level two, I would have to pay two energy cubes. The same would go on for level three, four, and so on and so forth. I always play, pay the amount of en in energy cubes of the level that I want to get to. Now what's more, if the safety marker was on the guarded or secured level, or in case of the creature dimension, the security marker was on the terrified or devoured level, the character's ability would immediately trigger. In this case, if the character was in the human dimension, it would say, it says, the town player, the town gains two energy and draws one card. This is the place where the character's ability triggers. The final phase is the movement phase, which is where you move the activity marker according to the direction showing by the direction token, and then you flip it to the other side. It is now that player's turn to perform their turn. And that's basically how the game plays. Uh, one thing I want to note here is that uh, different situations cause you to discard a card. For example, when you play a card for the symbol, and for example, if it's not an equipment card and you don't want to leave it in the game, you then simply put it in your discard pile. But certain actions specifically tell you to remove a card from the game. You then remove the card completely from the game. You do not put it into any of the discard piles. You simply remove it. The card will never come back into play during this game. So that's one thing I wanted to, you to understand that it differs, but you are always specifically told if you have to remove, if you should remove a card permanently from the game. So that's how the game works. You play until one of the end game conditions are met. Let's see what triggers the end game. The first possible thing are the characters and their current safety levels. If at any point during the game, three characters are in the devoured state, the creature immediately wins. Also, if at any point during the game, three characters are on the secured level, then the town player immediately wins. Now another possibility of resolving the end game has to do with the fact that certain card actions or abilities allow you to remove characters from the game. If at any point during the game you have five characters left in the game, like so, you then count up and you see who, who which player has the most characters on their side. In this case, we have three characters in the human dimension and two characters in the creature dimension, which means that the town player wins. The final possibility is that if at any point during the game either of the players reaches number six on their awareness level, as it says here, they immediately win the game. And that's it. The game ends immediately and the winner is crowned. Now, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them in the comment section. I'll get back to you as, as soon as I can. And I'll also, have, I'll also ask the very nice people over, over at Board and Dice to take a look at the comment section every once in a while. And maybe they will be able to provide you with some assistance as well. Now, there is a pre-order going on already for the game. I will put the link to the pre-order campaign in the description below as well. So if anything that you've seen here is to your liking and you think you might enjoy the game and want to add it to your collection, do not hesitate and click on the link that is available in the description below. Well, that's all for me. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you again, Board and Dice, for providing us with a copy of this game. And uh, I hope I see you all again soon sometime. In the meantime, stay safe and stay out of the creature's dimension. Stay safe right here with us, the humans. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye-bye.